solid silver with beauty that lives forever is International Sterling. From Hollywood, International Silver Company, creators of International Sterling, presents The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. see what's going on at the Nelson house. There's David. And there's Ricky. Now, David seems to be rather busy. Maybe he's doing his homework. At least he seems to be doing a lot of writing. Hey, David. Yeah? Let me borrow your pen, will you? What for? Don't ask silly questions. I want to do my homework. Are you crazy? There's no school tomorrow. Oh, yeah? Listen, wise guy. Listen to what? Oh, no, you don't. Not till after you lend me your pen. Don't get your dander up. Having trouble, boy? Not exactly, Mom. I was just getting my dandruff up. <laughs> the word happens to be dander. There's no rough in it. There will be if you don't lend me that pen. <laughs> Take it easy, will you, fellas? What's all the excitement? Oh, I'm not sure. I think it has something to do with a pen. It's David's, and he says I can't borrow it. Oh, I'm sure he's just teasing you a little. What happened to your own pen, Rick? That's what I'd like to know. He was writing with it just a little while ago. Well, it didn't work, so I threw it in the wastebasket. Well, I thought you just bought it the other day. Yeah, I did. A lot of the kids bought them. And I guess we got stuck. Where'd you buy it? Down at Birkin's drugstore. Well, if the pen doesn't work, you ought to take it back. Mr. Birkin's a very nice man. Oh, I know it, Pop. Maybe he doesn't realize the pens aren't quite up to standard. Somebody sure ought to tell him, boy. After all, when you spend money for something, it should be right. And how? Pay good money for something, you expect to get something in return. I'm with you all the way. <laughs> and how much did you pay for the pen? Well, 39 cents. <laughs> well, is that all? What are you complaining about? I'm not complaining. It was the 39 cents I borrowed from you. <laughs> My money? You mean you spent all that money on a pen that doesn't work? Now, wait a minute. It isn't only the cost involved, it's the principal. What about the interest? You get your money. Don't worry. Well, your father's right. Well, if something isn't right, you ought to take it back. People are always complaining about things, and nobody wants to do anything about them. Like Ricky and his pen. Heck, I did something about it. I just threw it away. <laughs> I think it would make much more sense to take the pen back to Mr. Birkins. He'll probably give you your money back. That's a good idea. Then I could go to the movies this afternoon. If you mean the bees, you, my advice is stay home. You're just saying that because it's your money. <laughs> I just don't want you to have nightmares tonight, that's all. Well, what happened? Was the picture a little on the scary side? I'll say. It was a triple horror feature. Well, I thought it was just a double feature. In one of the pictures, this guy had two heads. It was really pretty frightening. No wonder you got home so fast last night. Yeah, I could just picture that guy looking out from behind a tree, both sides at once. <laughs> oh, you mean this man was actually supposed to have two heads? Yeah, one regular head and then this other one he carried around under his arm most of the time. <laughs> Holy smoke! Yeah, I told you it was scary. Well, I don't see why you go and torture yourself watching junk like that anyway. I saw Mr. Thornbury there. <laughs> he left early. <laughs> The toughest part would be walking home. Yeah, especially on our street. It's so dark. And there wasn't any moon last night. You're telling me. I saw this person walking up ahead of me. Could hardly tell it was Mr. Thornbury. Why don't you walk home with him? I think he's mad at me or something. Mad at you? Yeah. When I started to walk faster, he hardly even turned around. <laughs> well, what did he say when you caught up with him? Heck, he started running so fast, I couldn't catch him. Well, Dave, he probably didn't recognize you. Yeah, and I wanted to give him Will's football, too. Found it down the street. Will's football? Yeah. And yeah, maybe that's why he started to run. Why is that? When we turned around, I was carrying the football under my arm. <laughs> yes, that might have had something to do with it. I think I'll stay in the house today. <laughs> I thought you were going down to see Mr. Birkin. Well, if, if I can find somebody walking in that direction. Come on, I'll go with you. 
Golly, David, will you? I suppose so. Let's go. Okay, but leave the football here. Ricky, let go of my hand. <laughs> Barney? Oh, hi, Hey, here's Will's football. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't recognize you first. David found it up the street last night. Last night? Yeah, he was coming home from the movies. So that's who it was. <laughs> you ought to teach the boy how to carry that football. <laughs> and don't tell me he was carrying it like a loaf of bread. No, more like an extra head. <laughs> practically ignored him. Well, you know how dark the street is at night. I, I, I didn't recognize him. Besides, I was in quite a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I understand the picture was rather interesting. Picture? Yeah, David said he saw you at the movies. Oh, well, Catherine was at some club meeting, so I made the mistake of going down to that double-headed bill. <laughs> How'd you like it? Oh, I might as well confess, Oz, it was gruesome. Yeah, so David said. Well, they should only show those kind of pictures to kids. Oh, well, yeah, they're used to those two-headed monsters from reading the comic books. It was too much for a poor, unsuspecting coward like me. Well, you couldn't have been that bad. Well, actually, it was that long walk home. You know, I never realized it, but there isn't one street light in our entire block. I know, it does get pretty dark around here. I think somebody down at the city hall would see that we needed a couple of lights. Or just one would do the trick. Well, sure. You know, something ought to be done about this. You're absolutely right. But it's just like everything else. People talk about doing things, but somehow they never seem to do anything about them. Catherine and I were talking about it last night. And we were talking about it this morning. It's ridiculous. I can't go to a good horror picture just because there's no street light on the floor. <laughs> Man can't walk home alone without being scared stiff. That is not scared. Yes, scared. You didn't see the picture. <laughs> well, something ought to be done about it. Something will be done about it. Then it's all agreed? Yes, sir. No more walking home along the dark street all along. Right. From now on, we go to those horror pictures together. <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad we got that taken care of. <laughs> See you, Bernie. So long. That's you, Ozzy? No, ma'am, it's just us. What do you mean, just? Okay, so you're a big shot. Thank you, my boy. <laughs> well, I'd appreciate it if you big shots would wash up for lunch. Do I have time to make a couple of phone calls? Well, who do you have to call? Let's see, there's Iggy Schwartz and Artie Peterson and Michael Commons and Ronnie Biddle. Well, just a minute, what's all this about? I have to let him in on the big news. What big news is this? Didn't I tell you? You just got home, you dope. Careful who you call a dope, boy. Yes, sir. I beg your pardon, sir. Yes, sir. What is this all about? I wish somebody would tell me. Uh, you can tell me, too, while you're at it. Oh, hiya, Pop. Hi. Hey, your advice sure worked neat. My advice? Sure, Mr. Perkins and I had a nice little talk, and he's going to exchange all the pens. Oh, I hope you weren't disrespectful to him. Oh, no, Pop. You should have heard him. Everybody's calling him the drugstore diplomat. <laughs> well, good for him. Is that so? All the kids in the neighborhood think he's a hero. And the embarrassing thing is that I am. <laughs> I can imagine your embarrassment. I think that's fine. I tell you it's probably a misunderstanding or something. Mr. Birkin said that I'd done the whole community a favor. Well, that was very nice of him. He said the pens were no good. Well, that's fine. He said he was glad he found it out before he sold any more of them. I'm sure he was. I guess I was just the man for the job. <laughs> find a man for a certain other job. What's that, Mom? Well, something really ought to be done about the streetlight on our block. There isn't any. Well, that's just the point. Yes, Barney and I were discussing that a little while ago. And I was talking to Mary Dunkel on the phone. She said all the neighbors have been talking about it, but nobody seems to have the nerve or energy to do anything about it. Because they just haven't found the right person. What about Pop? What about me? You could do it, Pop. I bet you're just the man. No. All it would take is somebody to go down to City Hall and talk to them about it. No. They probably don't realize we need a street light. Heck, don't they ever go to the movies at night? <laughs> Why don't you go down and see them, dear? Oh, Harry, you've heard the old expression, you can't fight City Hall. 
The only one who could do anything with those people is some lunatic who has thick skin and a thick skull who go down there and sop up all that abuse and wear them down just by being too boneheaded to give up. You see, I told you Pop was just the man for the job. <laughs> shiny new street light going up in front of the Nelson house? Well, it's all due to the tireless efforts of one public-spirited citizen, Ozzie Nelson. Once the street seemed dark and mysterious, especially after a triple horror bill at the movies. But now it'll be bright and cheerful. From now on, that fire plug and that large bush on the corner will be just a fire plug and a large bush, not Peter Lorre and Sydney Green Street. <laughs> Yes, I guess the whole neighborhood owes a vote of thanks to Crusader Ozzie Nelson. Hey, Pa, the men are putting up the street light outside. Yeah, it's going to be right in front of our house, too. Well, that's what I call service. Pa, doesn't mess around, boy. <laughs> I sure don't, boy. They're turning it on at 9 o'clock tonight. Maybe we ought to open a bottle of champagne and have a big street light celebration. Come on in, Come Sonny. Come on in, Sonny. Hi, folks. Well, oh, hi, Sonny. Have a seat. Oh, thanks, Oz, but I'd rather stand. You see, I, uh, I have a little speech to make. Speech? Does it have anything to do with that large sheet of paper in your hand? Yes, yes, it does. <clears throat> we, the families of this neighborhood, henceforth referred to as the undersigned, wish to present this scroll of service to our good friend and fellow neighbor, Ozzie Nelson. Oh, thanks very much, Sorry. Please, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> we, the undersigned, want to express our sincere appreciation of this public-spirited citizen who by his tireless devotion to duty has been an inspiration for all of us. Hear, hear! Quiet. <laughs> a man who kindled a tiny spark which has been fanned into a flame, which in turn has become an eternal beacon which shall light man's way on his ceaseless march toward a good and honorable life. I think. Oh, well, it's only a street light, Thorny. Yeah, well, but Very it's something nice. we've needed for a long time, and you're the man who finally got it for us. This, uh written commendation, plus a little gift we bought is to show our gratitude, huh? A gift? Oh, Tony, that's a little too much. I just want to do something for the neighborhood. Besides, Harry and the boys practically pushed me out of the house. <laughs> well, just the same, everybody wanted to take up a collection and buy you a gold watch. Oh, now, wait a minute, Tony. I can't accept a gold watch from you folks. I'm glad you said that, Oz, because we didn't get you one. <laughs> Here, we, uh, we got you this instead. Oh, really, you people shouldn't have done this, Tony, no matter what it is. Oh, say, look at this. Why, it's a beautiful... Well, it's some sort of a, a leather strap, isn't it? That's right. And like I said, we couldn't scrape up enough money to buy you a gold watch, so we bought you a watch strap instead. <laughs> If you ever do get a gold watch, you can just put that strap on. Oh, oh. <laughs> I really appreciate this, Thorny. Thanks very much. Can I get you a cup of coffee, Thorny? No, no, thanks, Harry. I'd better be running along. Yeah, I'll walk you to the door. Bye, Mr. Thornberry. Bye, Mr. Thornberry. Along, fellas. Along, Thorny. See you later, Harry. Oh, gee, thanks again for the speech and, and the present. Oh, Thorny. don't thank me, Oz. You deserve them both. No. See, it, it, it's men like you with your sense of public duty and fair play that make this country the great democracy that it is today. No, I Steadfast don't. men of purpose and determination who forge ever forward, unfaltering in their... Uh, oh, gee, thanks. Unfaltering <laughs> in their quest for right and justice for all. Men with vision. And... Yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, thank you and good night, Senator Wendy Thornberry. <laughs> interesting in the paper? No, nothing much. What do they say about our new street light? Oh, I hardly think they'd write up anything as unimportant as that, Nick. Well, I think it's important. Yeah, but I'm sure the newspaper wouldn't be interested. Well, look and see, Pa. I Maybe mean, they did say something about it. No, I have looked, Dave, and there isn't a word. <laughs> Not that I thought there would be, of course. Maybe we ought to start buying another paper. At what time is it, Harriet? Uh, five after nine. Wasn't the light supposed to go on at nine o'clock, fellas? Well, that's what the men said. Funny it hasn't gone on yet. 
Maybe they forgot to put a bulb in it. <laughs> Want me to go out and see? No, no, I'm sure it's all right. I'm going to go put the car away, Harry. You guys better go on up to bed now. Yes, I'm afraid it's that time again, fellas. You want to stay up and see Pop's light go on. Oh, you can watch it from your bedroom window. Remember, tomorrow's a school day. Yeah, who could forget? I have football practice, too. Come on, Rick, let's go. I'm not sleepy at all. No, but you will be in the morning. That's okay. I can sleep in school. <laughs> I'm good stalling now. Hey, I just saw a light go on outside. Yeah, it's probably the street light. Boy, it sure is bright. I wonder how long they leave it on. Well, you're not staying up all night to find out. Yeah, come on, Ricky. Okay. Good night, Mom. Good night, boys. And I don't want you reading any comic books under the cover, Ricky. Who, me? Yes, you. Oh, I won't, Mom. Word of honor. All right. Besides, I can't. The batteries in my flashlight are all worn out. <laughs> Harriet. Yes, dear. Oh, have the boys gone up to bed yet? Mm, I just got them off. Why? Well, they've left their stuff all over the driveway. Both bicycles, a football helmet, their football and the garden rake. I couldn't even drive the car in. Oh, now, wait a minute. I'm sure the boys are guilty of the bicycles and football equipment, but someone else must have left the garden rake there. If it wasn't me, I always pick up after myself. And if I don't, you do. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to leave the car in the driveway tonight. Well, can't you just move the thing? Well, the garage is sort of cluttered up, too. <laughs> I'm going to clean it out today, but I just didn't get around to it. The car will be okay anyway with a new street light out in front. Say, did you see it go on? Yes, I did. Very exciting. You know, actually, I think we have one of the best-looking street lights in the city. Of course, I'm not a connoisseur of street lights, but... I'll bet ours could hold its own against any other one around here. Oh, I'm certainly happy about it. I'll admit I used to be a little nervous coming home late at night. Well, it's like I've always said, it takes action to get action. Somebody just has to start the ball rolling. How'd that first part of Tony's speech go again? I really don't remember. We want to express our sincere appreciation to this public-spirited citizen who by his tireless devotion to duty has been an inspiration to us all. <laughs> kind of flowery, but very nice. <laughs> yes, it is. What'd you do? Take down the whole speech in shorthand? No, no, I just happen to remember it. You know, it's funny how you can remember some things and forget others so easily. Like what? Like things I've asked you to do around the house. Yesterday I asked you to rake up the leaves and you still haven't done it. No, I'm going to get it that first thing tomorrow afternoon. I left the garden rake right in the driveway so I wouldn't forget, didn't I? <laughs> you to help me wash the windows, and I'm still waiting. Two weeks ago, I asked you to help me clean out the attic, and uh, you still Pardon me for interrupting, dear. I just know it's getting past my bedtime. And excuse me, I think I'll go on up to bed. Well, it's only a few minutes past nine. Yeah, I'm kind of tired, though. Maybe I'll read in bed for a little while. Well, and I'll come up, too. No, no, no. You stay where you are. I can hear you upstairs all right. <laughs> How's the book? Oh, it's not bad. You ready to go to sleep now? Mm-hmm. But you go ahead and read if you want to. No, I, I better get to sleep, too. So would you turn off the light? All right. Good night, dear. Good night. Yeah, this bed sure feels comfortable. It certainly does. Yeah, I'm really sleepy. Harriet? Yes? I thought you were going to turn off the light. I did. The room seems awfully bright. I just noticed that myself. There must be a full moon tonight. There isn't any moon at all. You leave the hall light on? No. Light seems to be coming from outside. It's right through the front window. An awful thought just occurred to me. I hope it isn't the same awful thought that just occurred to me. The street light? I'm afraid so. Six, it's nice to have a light on the street, but they don't have to put it up so it shines right in our bedroom window. Well, pull down the shade. That ought to be enough. That's better. Mm. 
You know I don't want to do it. Good night, dear. Good night. Doggone it. What's the matter? Well, the light is shining in through the corner of the shade. <laughs> I mean, right in the eye, too. Well, turn your head the other way. <laughs> All right now? No. What's the trouble? Well, now the darn light is reflected in the dresser mirror. Your face. You'll be able to breathe. All the stupid places to put a street light. <laughs> what I'll do. What are you looking for? I'll tie a handkerchief over my eyes. Do it. Want me to help you? No, I've got it. Now this is better. Good night. Good night, dear. Harry? Yes? You hear a faucet dripping? No. I thought I did. I'll go to sleep, dear. Thanks. Yes, sir? Mm-hmm. Weren't you just about to say Harriet? Yes, I was. Are you thirsty? No, just tired. Oh. Started thinking about the dripping faucet, I thought I heard. All of a sudden, I got very thirsty. <laughs> oh, yeah. so dark I can't find the light switch. Ozzy, you've still got the handkerchief over your eye. <laughs> Doggone street light. As long as I'm up, are you sure you wouldn't like something to drink? Well, all right, as long as you're up. How about a sandwich, too? I think a little food will help me sleep. If that's a promise, I'll make you the sandwich myself. Good. What would you like, dear? No, nothing very much. Just uh, some of that ham and maybe a little tomato small piece of apple pie and a glass of milk. In other words, you just like another dinner. <laughs> no, no, just a snack. Well, that's strange. What's the matter? That streetlight must be very powerful. Look at our driveway. It looks like daylight out there. For the sakes, all we wanted was a simple streetlight, not a lighthouse. If we'd asked for a fire hydrant, they'd have dug a reservoir out in front. I'd be come here a minute. Look out the window. You left the car in the driveway. Yes, I told you that. But you also left the car lights on. <laughs> oh, holy smokes. I'll, I'll be back in a second. No, I'll go with you. No wonder the lights seem so bright. I don't think it could have been the car lights, though. They look very dim to me. And they're getting dimmer. Yeah, I wonder how the battery is. Move over. It's cold out here. Okay, slide in. Let's see here. Well, that answers your question about the battery. Yeah, it sure does. Oh, what a night. Come on, dear, let's get to bed. Yeah, wait a minute. Well, it's kind of comfortable here in the car. Quiet and peaceful. Come on. It hurts. 
some noise out here. Don't wake your father, David. Gosh, is Papa asleep? Yes, and he's going to need all the rest he can get. It'll be quite a job pushing the car down to the gas station tomorrow morning. You better get on to bed, David. Aren't you coming in the house, too? No, I'm staying right here with your father. Oh, gee, Mom, you can't sleep in the car. Well, I'm not going to sleep up in that room all alone. Well, how come you have before? Well, I know, but you boys talk so much about that triple horror movie, I went to see it myself yesterday. <laughs> Please, Oz, I'd rather not be seen talking to you. What's this? You and your streetlight. If I were you, old boy, I'd leave town till this thing blows over. What are you talking about? Some of the folks are just for tar and feather. But the majority of them are shouting, string them up. Who, me? You mean you haven't gotten your bill yet? Bill for what? The streetlight. What is this, anyway? The city's assessed everybody on the block one dollar to pay for it. It's an outrage. <laughs> by Hot Point Quality Appliances, pioneer and leader in all electric kitchens and automatic home laundries. Next week, Ozzie and Harriet will be brought to you by Listerine, the most widely used antiseptic in the world, and antizyme... <laughs>